Hi, and welcome to People Like You. I'm your host, Bob Jackson, Pastor Russell Dooley from Kaleo Christian Fellowship. And we're here to talk to you today about living by faith. That's what I'm saying. So get your Bibles, blow the dust off of it, and come on and join us in the Word of God as we deal with living by faith. Mary turned to the serpents and said, whatever he tells yes, you yes, to do, do just do it. Now, these right. guys didn't go to Bible school. They right. didn't go to Rhema Bible College. They didn't go to any kind of a Bible institution. It was just simple yeah. faith. And the servants were instructed by Mary, right. the mother of Jesus, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. So we were talking before about Abraham and right. his faith. And right. I, I'd like to just pick that back up because the Bible says Abraham right. is the father of all of us when we live by faith. And I want to I want to show you what that really means. It means that Abraham didn't go to Ramah Bible College. He didn't go, come on, he didn't go to theology school. He didn't go, I'm not knocking, I'm just telling you. He didn't have anything like that. All he had was a revelation from God. The Word of God is all he had, but that was all he needed for his faith to come alive. And that's why the Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But, you know, you said something that, that, that kind of piqued my interest. The thing that I know about Abraham, he had to have divine life enter into him. In order for the promise of God to take root in him, he had to have faith. That's all he needs. God works through our faith. So as God worked through the faith of Abraham, then supernaturally, God was able to do something in his life that no one else could do. Think about that. God wants to do something supernaturally in your life that no one else can do. And I think they just say it's supernatural because they can't explain how it right. happens. And that's why they call it supernatural, because it has to be God that's doing it. But you have to understand, God does what he promised. Yes. Not, you just can't get in, in front of God and say, well, God, if that be the, the case, then abracadabra, I want you to make this happen, yeah. make this happen. And say, whoa, 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 whoa. You've got to go back to what I said, and you have to stand on the promises of God. Right. You've got to believe what God says, and then you have to act on what God says in order for God to fulfill what he promised. That's, that's right. The, that's the problem with faith. And people want to make up what they're saying. They want to make up their own thing and yeah. try to get God to go along with you. That, God's that's not going to go along with you. That's it. He says you have to go along that's with it. him that's in it. order for his supernatural faith to yeah. operate in you. Abraham yeah. went along with God. That's right. And he did it, and God imputed it for to him for righteousness because he did it. Amen? And well, that's what faith is all you about. You know, you hit the nail on the head because you said Abraham received the promise of God. It was God's word to Abraham that Abraham acted on it. So it wasn't something out of his imagination, his mindset. It was what God promised him. And yes. you're so right when it comes to believing and trusting God to manifest his promise. Amen. Absolutely. People come up with their ideas. Amen. And then, then they want God to agree with him. But that is not faith in God. That's trying to have faith in your own faith. Or faith in faith. Yeah. And it doesn't work. Doesn't and, work. And I just know you hit the nail on the head. That's the promise to that's right. the problem today in the church. We're having faith in faith and it's not working. No. God said, listen, I need you to take my word. That's why you should be a student of the word of God, not a scholar, but a student mm -hmm. where you study the word of God. You study because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Word and of as God. you hear the word of God, your faith comes alive more and more mm -hmm. to see what God has promised you. And God has given you every thing that's pertaining to life and godliness, he says it's already yours. Come on, man. Well, let's take a Glory look at this. Everything, if you study the Word of God and you look at through every person in the Bible, how God dealt with that, he always required them to have faith. Look at every particular case that God manifests a miracle. In fact, Hebrew 11 is the Hall of Faith. The Hall of Faith. And yeah. when you look at each and every one by faith. Yeah. By faith. Yeah. And when you look at these, uh, a bishop in the 11th chapter, and you go down each person of faith, you see how each one received a promise. Each one got a miracle. Each right. one were blessed. Now, if my Bible is correct, God's not a respecter of person. Correct. He wants to meet every need in every life by faith. Right. And so when we trust Him individually and develop our own faith in God, then God will manifest His power in us to receive all that he wants to do. And I believe that with all my heart. And so you don't need to be like the disciples who came to Jesus and said, Lord, increase our faith. 
they could see right away that they right. had a problem walking by faith. So they thought they needed more faith. Right. What, what's what's yeah. the problem with that? And some of you viewing right now, you think you need more faith and maybe I need more faith. No, no, no. Romans chapter 12, verse 3, the Bible says God has already given every one of us the measure of faith. And I mm. love it because he didn't say a measure, measure of faith or a measure. He said, I gave you the right, measure. And right. what that means to me is that no matter who you are, yes. he, God gave you sufficient faith to give you the victory in your life. Hallelujah to God. So you have the faith that you need. God has already given it to you. But for you to act on it, mm. believe it and act on it. And that's what God is waiting for. Right. The moment that you act on it is the moment that God will bring it to pass. It's like, for instance, somebody viewing right now, you're sitting in your bed, you're lying in your bed, or you may be in a hospital bed, and you've been lying there for quite mm -hmm. a while. And God is saying to you, by the stripes of the Lord Jesus right. Christ, you are healed. And you're saying, yeah, I know that's what the Bible says, Brother Bob, but I'm sick and I'm, I'm, I'm in the hospital mm -hmm. and I'm not feeling. Well, you know what? If you really believe that by the right. stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are healed, healed, then you would say, by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm healed. And guess what you'd do? You'd get up out of that bed. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. By faith. And I believe God, that's what happened at the gate of beautiful. Yeah. When Peter and John came out of the temple, they had been praising right, and giving God right, glory. Right. The man was crippled and lame at mm -hmm. the gate of beautiful. And Peter looked over at him. The man was begging for alms, for mm -hmm. money. Right. Peter looked him right in the face and said, silver and gold, gold have I none. Have I none. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but don't rule me out. Yeah, I've got yeah. something better than silver. Yeah, I'm preaching yeah. now. God, I've got better than something than silver and gold. Right. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he grabbed the man by the arm. And I'm sure the man said, listen, listen, stupid. I can't walk, okay? Why do you think I'm here with this tin cup begging for money? If I could walk, I'd go get me a job. And Peter didn't let it bother him. He said, look on us. Yeah. And when he began to lift him, the Bible says when he began to lift him, as he began to rise up, his legs were restored. Yeah. His feet came together. His yeah. muscles yeah. came together. And the man could walk and right. leap and shout. Yeah. It wasn't until he acted on the faith yeah. that he received his blessing. Well, he said he was looking on him, didn't he? Stay right there. We'll be right back. Yeah. It is faith that is born in the heart of man through the Holy Ghost yes. that produces faith. Faith has a spiritual life, a yes. force yes. that comes about as we release it through our conversation, through our witness, through our testimony, and through our actions. Hi, Hi, welcome back. Listen, we're talking about faith, and I'm telling you, we're getting excited yes. here in the studio. Russ, there was something that we talked about in the break. What were you saying? Well, we were talking about the disciples were always thinking about how to get more faith, how yeah. to get more faith. Right. And Jesus was trying to teach them, listen, you have enough faith. Yes. All you got to do is use what you have. My God. So I looked this up in Luke 17 and 6, Bishop, and he said, if you have faith, as small as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, it will obey you. So hmm. according to what you said, that God has given man measure of faith. Each one of us have already been given a measure of faith that we have that mustard seed faith to get a miracle. Let's take that, let's take that right there, that scripture, Romans 12 and 3. Somebody said, I need to see that in the Word. Okay, go to, get your Bible. Come on, go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. I'm going to show you God has already given, He's given every one of His children the measure of faith. Not yeah. a, but the. And that's very significant yes. when you really understand it. Romans chapter 12, I'm going to go to verse 3. Mm -hmm. Okay, look what it says. All right, Romans chapter 12, verse 3, he says, For I say through the grace given unto me right. to every man. How many? Every man. Every man. Poor man, rich man, beggar man, thief yeah. man, jail man, yeah. black man, white man, brown man, yellow man. Every man. Every man, watch this, that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Yeah. Don't touch that dial. I'm talking to you. Yes. Hallelujah to God. God said, I've already given you the measure of faith. Yeah. Now the question is, what are you doing with it? That's it. What are you doing with it? And I'll tell you why God's not blessing you with those promises that he promised you. Yeah. Because God intended for you to use that faith mm -hmm. and operate in that faith. That's why he gave it to yes. you. 
And so faith again calls the things that be not as though they were. Mm -hmm. Faith again is the title deed or the assurance of things Thanks. that's hoped for when the evidence is not even there yeah. to be seen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And we Amen. summed it up by saying yes. faith is simply belief in action. Amen. Yes, so it. you don't need more faith. You just need to use, as Pastor Dooley said, you need to operate in the faith that God has already given you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah to God. For the just shall live by faith. Yes. Hallelujah to yes. God. Now, I know that may be difficult, amen, when you're used to walking by what you see mm -hmm. and what you hear. So you've been listening to the enemy telling you, you can't, you can't make it, you're a failure, you'll never be anything, it'll never work. The devil is a liar. The Bible says, let every man be a liar mm -hmm. and let God be the truth. Mm -hmm. And you know why God said that? Because his word is truth. People tell me all the time, they say, well, I don't want to lie, brother Bob. I had a lady in the prayer line one time, Russ, right. and, uh, and I said, ma'am, do you believe that by the stripes of the Lord right. Jesus Christ you are healed? Mm -hmm. She says, I can't help what that Bible says, preacher. I'm sick. <laughs> I said, ma'am, but the Bible says, <laughs> 2 Peter 2, 24, that, that by his stripes you were healed. Right. I told you I don't care what that Bible says. I am sick. You know what I said to her? Go back and sit yeah. down, ma'am, because all the praying with all the preachers on this yeah. side of heaven couldn't get you healed. We can grease you down till you yeah. can slip through a keyhole, yeah. and I guarantee you, you will never, never. be healed. Nope. You know why? Because you don't believe what God's Word said. Yeah. If more people believed God's Word yeah. when it comes to finances, there would be no problem in the churches with going forth in ministry because they would have more money than what we need to, to continue the ministry. But you know what? They got this Prado law. I think it's Prado. This 80, 20 percent. Right, right. So 20% of the people sitting in the church actually right. believe God to pay tight and give their offerings. And 80% mm -hmm. don't believe God. So 80% are suffering financially. Don't touch that dial. 80% are suffering yes. financially because they do not believe God's yeah. word when he said, if you pay your tithe and give your offerings, he said, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. And the ones who need yeah. the blessings are saying, but Lord, I can't afford to pay tithe and give offerings. And God is saying, you can't yeah. afford not to. Because when you do what God says, then he'll do what he promised. Mm. But you got to be a lunatic. To well, think that I need money yeah. and God wants me to rest. I can't. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm listening to what you're saying. But, you know, Hebrew, it says, take heed, brethren. And I'm reading from the third chapter, verse 12. There would be any one of you of an evil heart of unbelief mm. from departing from the living God. Unbelief. And here it is. God calls unbelief an evil heart. Wow. And so when you look at this, it says that they, the word of God was preached other than them, but they could not enter in because of their unbelief. That's the truth. That's so I'm truth. looking in Hebrew 4, uh, verse 12. Hebrew 4, verse 12. It says, let us therefore fear least a promise of, let, of entering into the rest that any of you should come short of. Because the word of God was preached unto them as well as unto us. But the word preached to them did not profit them, not being mixed by faith. Wow, you see that? So, so, so what is he saying? He's saying, so you can hear the word of God right. and we can preach the word of God. We can give you the word of God. We can minister the word of God. It will do you absolutely no good until you get to the point where you say, you know what? If God said it, we used to say stuff like that. Right. If God said it, yeah. I believe it. Right. And therefore, I'm going to speak it. I'm right. going to act on it. We don't say things like that anymore in the church. No. We don't really say things. And that confession was part of the fact that we believe what God said. And as soon as you can believe what God says and begin to act on what God says, and again, that's our definition right. for faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is belief in action. action. So if you have unbelief, as Pastor Dooley was saying, you, really, you already know you're not going to act on it. You're not going to pay your time. You know why? Because the devil have you said, well, look at these bills. Look at all these bills that I have. Look at all this money that I owe. And God said, you know what? The first bill you should think about paying is tight. 10% mm. of what I've given you, God, and people tell me, oh, tithing is of the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. broke is of the Old Testament too. You know yeah. that? Yeah. And broke is of the New Testament. God never <laughs> intended for his children to be broke. <laughs> Never. He says the silver is mine, the gold is mine. So God has all that gold and all that yeah. silver. And guess what? He doesn't need any. No. Stay right there. We'll be right back.
So before the break, we were talking about unbelief. And when unbelief enters the picture, God cannot perform his promises in our lives because he cannot work with unbelief. Russ, you had a scripture for that. Yeah, I was looking at Hebrew, the fourth chapter, verse number two. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Go, go back to that. The, the, what was being preached? The word of God. Notice, it wasn't just feel good stuff. It wasn't inspirational messages. Right. It wasn't things that was just tickling your ears right, and making right. you feel good. Yeah. It was the word of God that right. was being preached. And right. when the people grabbed on to the word of God, listen, and as a real believer of the Lord Jesus, we should grab on to the word of God like a hungry dog with a yeah. biscuit. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you reach down and try to get that biscuit from that hungry dog, what will he do? Yeah, he'll take hold of it. He'll bite he'll, your hand. Yeah, yeah, he'll take hold of you or the biscuit. You know what? One of the <laughs> Gonna bite you or the biscuit. <laughs> so, so God is saying to us, when you hear the word of God, when you hear the promises of God, grab on to the word of God and then yes. by faith act on it yes. because God cannot act in unbelief. Well, here's the thing. I believe that faith comes from the born again human spirit. As a result yeah. of God working in us, Correct. it doesn't work through a mental force. No. It's not a mental mindset. It's right. not willpower. Right. It is faith that is born in the heart of man through the Holy Ghost yes. that produces faith. Faith has a spiritual life, a yes. force yes. that comes about as we release it through our conversation, through our witness, through our testimony, and through our actions. So the bottom line, God is saying to us today, and we're saying to you that God wants you to live the abundant life. Yes. He wants you to live the victorious life, but you can't do it just by looking at it. Right. You have to do it by faith. There was something in that scripture over there at 17th chapter of Luke. I right. want to go back over there just a moment because in the King James version, that's why I like the old King James. He says something very arresting there. Luke chapter 17, verse six, the Bible, well, first of all, go to five. He says, the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure every one of you viewing is saying, it must be a problem with my faith. Right. And so that's what the disciples said. Watch this. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, yeah. you might say unto this sycamine tree. Now notice right. this. The King James Version says, this sycamine tree. And the translator said, no, he meant sycamore tree because there's no such tree as a sycamine tree. I beg the difference. If the Lord Jesus said it was a sycamine tree, Guess what? It was a sick of mind tree. So what yeah. does the Lord say? He's saying the problem with your faith is that you're using your sick mind trying to understand <laughs> and to intellectually understand what I said <laughs> instead of just doing what I told you to do. One of the greatest <laughs> messages preached was by a woman, the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, when they ran out of wine. Come on. It's the first miracle that's recorded in the Bible. When they ran out of wine at the wedding feast, that's not an excuse for you to drink wine. I don't you touch that dial. I want, I want you to know. When they ran out of wine at the wedding feast, Mary turned to the servants and said, whatever he tells yes, you yes, to do, do just do it. Now, these right. guys didn't go to Bible school. They right. didn't go to Rhema Bible College. Right. They didn't go to any kind of a Bible institution. It was just simple right. faith. And the servants were instructed by Mary, right. the mother of Jesus, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. And boy, if the church could ever get that message, that's the greatest message ever preached. Right. What did they do? Filled up water pots right. with right. water when right. the man wanted wine. Yeah. And, then he t and then the Lord Jesus told him, draw out the wine right. and give it to the governor yeah. of the feast. Right. Now the servants, Russell, can you yeah. imagine? Yeah. Wait a minute. He's We're nuts. getting ready to get our head cut yeah. off. Yeah. It, we know this is water. How do you know it's water? Yeah. I saw Cause, it. Because we put the water in there. Yeah. We put mm -hmm. water in there. Right. Bring that wine out of those containers. Right. No, it's not wine. It's water. It's water. How do you yeah. know it's water? We put the water in there. Yeah. We did it ourselves. Yeah. What did that woman say? Do whatever he says. What did that woman say? Do whatever he says. So we're servants, and the woman said, do yeah. whatever he tells us. Yeah. So they dipped into the water that right. they knew was water, right, right. and they took it to the governor. And what right. did the governor say when he tasted the water? Yeah, he says, wow, you saved the best to last. So the question is, when did the water turn into wine? That's the question when they acted on what he said. Hallelujah to God. <laughs> when they acted on what he said. When will your water turn into wine? Hallelujah. When you act 
on what God has said in spite of what you feel, what you think, what you taste, what you touch. If you just act on it, don't think about it. Yeah. Somebody's finances are going to be turned around right, right now because you are going to have faith to believe God, pay your tithe, give your offerings, and then you begin to say, Somebody's writing me a check right now. Hallelujah to God. God's going to pay your bills, bless your financial. Somebody's going to get married because they're going to go out today, buy them a great big box and start filling it up with the things that I need. And don't forget, put a frying pan and a pot in there too, okay? Because yeah. men have to eat something more than top ramen and hot dog, all right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so and get a cookbook put in there yeah. too, amen? So you, can, so you can get down. Learn and to cook. And don't you touch that dial. I'm talking amen. to you. Amen? So you can have when, you, when your husband comes. Yeah. I said when your husband comes. Not if he comes, when your husband comes, yeah. you'll be ready yeah. for your husband in Jesus' name. That's yeah. called faith. Yeah. Faith always, amen, gets ready for the blessing. Is that right? Yeah, look at James. James 2, 17. So even so faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. James 2, 17. 2, 17. Read it again. Yeah, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. My Lord. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Well, show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by works. So everything you're seeing in your life is a product of the faith that you mm -hmm. believe. That, that's what I got that's out of That's right. Everything you're seeing in your life is a product of the faith or the belief that you have and the faith that you're operating with. So if you don't see yourself where God says you're supposed to be, believe me, it's not God's fault. Right. And, it, and it's not don't listen to the devil when he says you've done so many sins that God can't right. bless you. The devil's a liar. Yeah. You're just not operating by faith. Well, and if you begin taps, to operate yes. by faith, I mm -hmm. guarantee you, mm -hmm. you're going to see a difference. Even, the, even our spiritual armor requires us to take the shield of faith whereby we quench the fiery darts of the enemy. That's what he said. You know well, what I mean? we've run out of time for this segment, and I want you to know it's been wonderful being with you. For information on Axeful Gospel Church or Kaleo Christian Fellowship, visit axefullgospel.org or kaleocf at org or ktln.tv. Remember that KTLN is a donor-supported ministry, and programs like this one are made possible through your support. Thanks for being with us today. Join us again next week. God bless. Bye.